Hi, and welcome. You're listening to the X-22 Report. My name is Dave, and this is episode 1294B, and today's date is May 31st, 2017, and the title of the episode is Trump Moves Forward to Prepare America for the Transition. Let's get into the economic collapse, political and geopolitical news. Now, today on the corporate media, we can see that the Kathy Griffin story it is making headlines everywhere. Now, she's a comedian. She does a lot of things for shock value. And she decided to hold up a severed head that was completely bloodied. And it was Trump's head. And there were no words or anything associated with the photograph. And this was supposed to be a joke. And many people started to respond to this joke and say, this is not funny. First of all, the head it looks pretty darn good. It looks lifelike. It looks something that the Islamic State would use as a propaganda piece. And we can see that many people said that they were canceling her show because they didn't agree with what she was doing. Trump texted out there that Kathy Griffin should be ashamed of herself. He said, my children, especially my 11-year-old son, Barron, are having a hard time with this. She said, this is completely sick. Melania is out there and she is saying that it makes you wonder about her mental health. And after all of this backlash and everything that was going on and people saying that we're canceling her concert, she decided to make an apology. Now, when you watch the video of her apology, she didn't apologize to Trump, his family, to the president. She apologized to all those people who didn't get the joke and who were slamming her for what she has done because what she's really doing is she's trying to save face and trying to make this go away because she realized she took it too far and her fans are now basically leaving her and she got fired from CNN. She's not going to be doing shows at the MGM and there are many things happening out all at once. Now, when you look at the apology, she rolls her eyes and it doesn't really sound like an apology because it wasn't really to the Trump family. Now, the question is, is this okay because of freedom of speech? Of course, she can freely say whatever she wants. It makes no difference, just like you can scream out fire in a movie theater. But there are consequences for that. And there might be consequences for this because she might have violated 18 U.S. Code Section 871 by threatening the life of the president. Being a celebrity or claiming you were just kidding is really not an excuse. And this section states the following. Whoever knowingly and willfully deposits for convenience in the mail or for delivery from any post office or by any letter carrier, any letter, paper writing, print, missive, or document containing any threat to take the life, to kidnap, or to inflict bodily harm upon the President of the United States, the President-elect, the Vice President, or any other officer next in the order of succession to the office of the President of the United States or the Vice President, or knowingly willfully otherwise makes any such threat against the President, President-elect, Vice President, or any other officer next in the order of succession to the office of the President or Vice President-elect shall be fined under this title or in prison not more than five years or both. Now, the only question is whether the video represents a real threat as opposed to some sort of joke or satire that should obviously not be taken seriously. Now, I can understand if she went out there with like maybe a puppet head of Trump and, you know, she said, oh, I'm cutting it off and look at the puppet head and things like that. Yes, you can see that as a joke, but this holding the head all bloodied making it look as lifelike as possible. Well, I don't know if you can use this as an excuse. And apparently the people, even CNN, because they realized what was happening here, they were like, okay, we don't want to get involved with this whatsoever. We're not even touching this. She's just going to be fired from the New Year's show. So we could see right now that she might not be able to use the excuse that I'm a celebrity, this was a joke. And of course, this is what she's trying to do. And we can see that this is all what the corporate media is focused on right now. And you have to realize at this point that, yes, you can joke about the president. You can joke about any president. But think about this. If this was done to Obama, what do you think the corporate media would have done? Do you think this would have just been, oh, what a funny joke? No, of course not. But because it's Trump, this is allowed. 
Now we're getting information that Trump is getting ready to remove the U.S. from the Paris Climate Accord. Axios is reporting that two sources with direct knowledge of the decision confirm President Trump has made his decision to withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord. It appears, it appears Trump has made his decision and the details on how the withdrawal will be executed are being worked out by a small team, including the EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt. They're deciding on whether to initiate a full formal withdrawal, which would take three years, or exit the underlying United Nations Climate Change Treaty, which would be faster but more extreme. Now, Trump's decision reportedly follows a letter from 22 Republican senators, including Mitch McConnell, that called for, that called for a clean exit, had reinforced Trump's instincts to withdraw. And the president has been telling confidence over the past week that he was going to pull out. Now, we will have to see how this proceeds. But by doing this, pulling out of the Par out of the Paris Climate Accord is the biggest thing Trump could do to unravel Obama's climate legacy, unravel the deep state in what they wanted to do. And this sends a signal to the rest of the world that America doesn't prioritize climate change and threatens to unravel the ambition of the entire deal. And again, Trump is moving in baby steps right now to prepare the United States for a transition. And to do this properly, he needs to undo many different things or we need renegotiate certain deals because he realizes when the system is reset, our way of life is going to completely change. Again, we mentioned how the dollar most likely won't be the reserve currency. It looks like there are two pieces of legislation that are looking to control the Fed and then eventually re get rid of the Fed. And we can see at this point, renegotiating NAFTA, and if that doesn't work, getting rid of it, trying to bring manufacturing back to the United States, trying to bring jobs back to the United States, getting rid of the TPP, joining the Belt and Road, and getting rid of the climate accord, removing the United States from this, is unraveling everything the deep state wanted from the beginning. And there's a lot more to do. Now, remember, the deep state is not just going to sit back and let this happen. But we can see at this point that we're going to go through this period of, a, of this transition where we need to be prepared and ready. Now, if Trump plan does not work out, and he can't cut off the funding to the deep state, the deep state will stay in power. And again, if you worked in a corporation and you dealt with many different levels and different factions within the corporation, you understand what he needs to do at this point. He needs to move slowly. He needs to realize who is working with him and who isn't working with him. I believe he has a team of individuals that are working with him to maneuver through all this. And again, it's like maneuvering through a minefield and it is very, very difficult, but we can see at this point that he's doing whatever he possibly can. And there is a plan that is already set in motion as we can see. Now, I think a lot of people thought he was just gonna go into office and he was just gonna start firing people left and right. This would not have worked at all. The deep state would have gone Adam, like there was no tomorrow. Actually, they probably would have just assassinated him. So he needs to move very, very slowly. Actually, he may, he needs to make it look like he doesn't know what he's doing, like he's a bumbling idiot. And I think this is part of his plan. I know there was a tweet out there today with a spelling mistake. And listen, we all make spelling mistakes when we're typing. I mean, it happens every single time. Even when you're using your phone, it tries to, you know, fix your spelling or replace a word with a different word and you don't even realize it and you send the text out. Well, this happened today, but actually this is working to his advantage, making it seem like he has no idea what he's doing. And this is keeping them off guard right now. And he's keeping them very busy with all the other propaganda that's going on, which is actually a good thing. And we can see right now, this is all part of the transition period. And he is working with Russia, he's working with China, he's working with many other countries because all these countries realize what is going to happen. Now, Putin was in France to meet with Macron and Macron talked with Putin 
And these talks were held immediately after the G7 summit, which may suggest that Macron served as a messenger from the Group of Seven, the European part of it. And he informed Putin about the results of the Sicilian summit, which was not very successful, judging by what many Europeans think. Now, what did this meaning this meeting mean for Putin? Well, Putin, he was laying it out saying that, listen, Europe needs Russia. They need to work together. They need to break through the so-called blockade. Now, remember, during the Obama administration, they were putting placing sanctions on Russia. It actually hurt Europe. Putin right now is saying, listen, things need to change at this point because the United States is not getting hurt by the sanctions. Europe is getting hurt by the sanctions. And Macron right now is saying, yes, we need to work with Russia at this point because if we don't, Europe will not survive. And we can see right now that Putin is just laying it out there, saying that, listen, we need to remove all restrictions for free trade. We need to work together with Europe. And we all need to be part of this system. And this is what the globalists didn't want to happen because they actually wanted to control the entire system. And they're still trying to do it. Remember, the deep state is so deep into the system right now that they are fighting everywhere to stay in power. We see it out in the UK with the EU. We see it out in the Philippines. We see it everywhere, and especially in the Middle East, where the deep state will not give up until the very end. Duderte right now, he was going to speak to the terrorists and try to work out something, but he says, no talks. We're going in and removing these individuals. And he's completely did a 180 right now saying he had enough already. He understands that it's the CIA. He understands that they're trying to assassinate him and they're sending in the the Islamic State to cause chaos in his country. And it looks like just like he went after the CIA drug operation, he's going after their operation of terror. And he was successful with the drug operation. Most likely, he will be successful in getting rid of the terrorist groups because he's actually going after them. Now, Nikki Haley was out there in the United Nations, and she's saying that the United States is trying to work with China using its channels to convince the government of North Korea to stop the missile launches. She said, at this point, I do believe, and I think the administration believes, that China is doing back-channel networking with North Korea in a way that is getting them to try to stop its nuclear testing. So we believe they are being productive. We do think that they're trying to counter what is happening now, but I'm not sure of this. And she's saying, when do we say enough is enough and we go in and we attack North Korea? Now, the thing is, Trump has set this up in private. Nikki Haley doesn't understand what is going on here. And she's trying to say, listen, after China, after the negotiations and they don't work out, we need to attack. And this is what is happening in her mind because she's part of the deep state. This is what they really want to do. On the back end, through these back channels with China, China is trying to set up deals with North Korea. Now, North Korea is going to continually they're going to continually test their missiles. They're not going to stop because they realize the deep state is coming for them and they need a way to protect themselves because if they stop testing, guess what? They're wide open to attack and they understand for and regime change and they understand this. And I'm sure that China is saying, listen, test your missiles, do what you need to do. And once you get it operational, guess what? Let's work this out economically. We'll take care of the deep state. And we will continually push them back and make sure they're not coming after you. Because what we're seeing right now is the South Koreans, they want to speak to North Korea. Actually, before all this happened, North Korea and South Korea, they were getting closer and closer. They were going to make deals. And then all of a sudden, they were pushed apart by the deep state and Obama. And now we can see Moon Jae-in, he, the president of South Korea, he wants to have talks with North Korea once again. Now, Yesterday, we mentioned how there was a THAAD system that he didn't understand how it got there. Basically, what happened was the his own military authorities, they deliberately withheld the information 
from the new president. They didn't want him to know there was additional THAAD systems in the country. They purposely left it off the government documentation, but he found out about it. So in South Korea, just like in the United States, they all have their deep state. They have all have their own individuals that are running rogue, that are not working with the president. We can see it everywhere. And once again, we can see how this has been working. Here in the United States, Trump is doing the same thing. They are withholding. They're doing operations that he's not privy to because they're not telling him. You might think he knows everything, but he really doesn't because we have different factions within the Pentagon. We have different factions within government, and they're not all reporting to Trump. They're reporting to their masters, whoever that might be. Now, we know the U.S., they had this successful simulated ICBM shootdown, and they're saying this is incredible, it's fantastic, but we need to look a little bit closer at what happened here. Now, they fired this ICBM. It was a slower-moving projectile. They knew the target. They knew the exact specifications. They knew the target size, the timing of the firing, and the trajectory. They knew every bit of information about the target. The U.S. missile defense system managed to physically hit the object under 100% optimal conditions. Now, let's think about this in real life. If another country fired an ICBM, would they have this information? No, they wouldn't. They would not be able to prepare for this. But this whole test was to convince the people through propaganda that we are protected. Now, for China, for Russia, their missile systems, they can bob, weave, and move away in different directions. North Korea, well, they haven't really developed their ICBM fully, and right now they're not a threat. But it's to make you believe that we are protected. And I'm going to tell you right now, in a real-life situation, an actual ICBM would not only be faster, but the U.S. wouldn't know its exact specifications, the exact trajectory, or the specific instant it was fired. Perhaps the biggest problem is they wouldn't have this data weeks in advance to pre-position the missile defense exactly where it would have the best shot of doing something. So this whole test, completely a waste of time. It was all used for propaganda. Now, the UN is warning that Yemen faces total collapse from the continued war. Uh, the crisis isn't coming. The crisis is already here. The war is going on a lot longer than expected. Remember, Yemen never really attacked anyone. Saudi Arabia, which was the proxy army for the United States, they attacked Yemen. And I didn't think they, th they didn't think it was going to be this difficult to remove the people of the country, but the people are fighting for something. As where the Saudi Arabians, they are using a paid mercenary army to go in there and they're just getting paid. And the country where the people are actually fighting something, they are going to win because they will never give up. Now, Turkey is refusing to allow German lawmakers to visit troops stationed at Turkey's Insulik Air Base. And they will only allow... Germany in if they see positive steps from Berlin. We see that German supports everything that is against Turkey. And right now there's a standoff with all of this. We see that the U.S. has officially started supplying weapons to the People's Protection Units, the YPG, and weapons are now flowing into Syria. And again, there were photos released by Mohammed Hassan, who is a Syrian journalist, and he tracked the equipment and he photographed all the trucks going to the area. We see that Russia, they have fired uh, cruise missiles at the Islamic State targets, and they did warn in advance the United States and Turkey and Israel before launching the missiles. And again, these missiles came from a frigate named Admiral Essen and a submarine named Kras Nodar. And we can see that they are still pushing the Islamic State back and they're going to continue to do this. And we see right now that the Islamic State, they are defecting to the moderate rebels because they realize 
they have to go back to the moderate rebels. This is where it all really came from. It's all one big terrorist group. And we see that the deep state, they are in trouble in Syria. They are losing ground. More and more towns, villages, and cities are being liberated. And they are moving eastward and clearing out every single town. And they're not stopping. Now, Putin said something very interesting. He was being interviewed in a French publication, Le Le Figuero, and he revealed that the U.S. president is more often than not just a figurehead of government. He said a certain person may be elected by the public on the basis of his merit and ideals, but rarely is this person able to formulate policy. Putin explained that the bureaucracy, which is another name for the deep state, they are the ones in control. And the deep state, he says, they're very powerful and as such does not allow any real change in direction. Those individuals that are elected into the White House, they're only there to satisfy the illusion of democratic process that is taking place. He says, in reality, men in dark suits who remain anonymous to the voting public continue to pursue the well-established interests of the U.S. elite with each incoming administration. And I find this very interesting that he is coming out and actually saying all of this, that the deep state is really in control, which tells me from what he's saying right now is that he's working with Trump along with China to remove this powerful entity. And we can see that everything that Trump is doing, we know that he's going up against the deep state. Many people might not see it right now. Many people are saying that, you know, he's not working for the people. He's not trying to do anything, but he can't do everything all at once. He's not going to go out and say, I know who murdered Seth Rich. I'm going to put this person in prison. The deep state, remember, they're the ones who are holding the cards right now. They're intertwined into the government. They control a lot of different areas. They have the funding through the central banking system, which is part of the entire system. And to make a real change that has been basically entrenched in the system for hundreds of years, well, something has to change right now. And to make this change, you need to chip away at what they have done and try to expose everything they have done. And if you look at the small things that he is doing right now. And they a lot of it seems insignificant. And a lot of it's not publicized. The corporate media is not even picking up on it. Where he's reviewing the land. Ah, eh, just a review of the land. You know, all the land that the president's put aside. Oh, the offshoring drilling. That's what he wants to do. He wants to drill up in Alaska. Oh, there's a representative that, that was sent to the Belt and Road. Oh, he wants to renegotiate NAFTA. He wants to get rid of the Paris Climate Accord. There's bills that are now in Congress where there needs to be an audit of the Fed. There needs to be control of the Fed. Remember, Trump is not working alone in this. There are other individuals that are working with him for the same exact cause. Each one of these things that he is doing right now, we're striking out the TPP and all the other stuff he's done. All of this is chipping away at the deep state, removing everything that they were trying to do and in the process also trying to bring manufacturing trying to bring jobs back preparing us for this transition that we are going to go through because when the system does come down everything will change we're going to go through very hard times the the government will not operate why do you think he's pushing out there trillions of dollars of budget cuts because he realizes that, listen, all this can't stay in place. All these entitlement programs, the millions of people that are employed by government, all of this is going to go away. I mean, even Molden Economics is saying that when we go through this reset, the tax revenue coming in will not exist. We're going to have deficits, deficits like we've never seen before. The government is going to fall apart at its seams. It, it's it's going to be awful. And the people are going to have to fend for themselves. And this is why you need to be ready and prepared with food, water, supplies. Because when things start to fall apart, 
the value of the dollar is going to decrease, decrease, decrease until it is worth absolutely nothing. Credit will freeze up. Supplies will not come into the... We'll have a period of time where things will get very tough and things will need to be reset. The free market will need to be reestablished. A new currency will be born. The Fed will be taken out of the picture. I mean, is this plan going to be foolproof? We'll have to wait and see. But this is the plan. And the deep state and the central bank, they have their plan. And this is the battle that we see right now on the corporate media. Yes, you're seeing the surface propaganda waste of time stuff, but this is the battle. They don't want you to look at what's really going on because if people really found out the truth. The country would be a complete disaster. So we see what's coming. We understand there's a transition coming. You need to get ready and prepared. Listen, everyone. Thanks a lot for listening. Be well, be safe, and especially be prepared. Thanks a lot.